Uh, again, if you are just with us here on ESPN, the breaking news, and it is indeed sad news for us to report this morning, and that is that Mississippi State head football coach Mike Leach has died. He was hospitalized over the weekend after reportedly suffering a massive heart attack. Leach was in his third season as head coach of the Bulldogs. He was at practice Saturday with his team as they were preparing to play a game against Illinois in the Relia Quest Bowl, which is scheduled for January 2nd. Later Saturday, he suffered a heart attack in his home, was eventually airlifted to the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi, where he died this morning. Mike Leach was 61 years old. We just uh, got some insight into him and into his career and more from our friend Paul Feinbaum. And now our preeminent voice of college football, Kirk Herbstreet, is able to join us here on the phone for a few minutes. And Herbie, we so appreciate it. I, I wonder if you could just share with the audience that did not get to know him. We all got to see Mike Leach coaching football, um, but none of us got to know him individually and personally the way I'm sure you did over the many years. What are your thoughts this morning on the sad news that Mike Leach has died? Yeah, yeah. I, my my first thoughts, of course, are with uh, with his wife and with his family. Uh, there's been so much speculation when the news broke uh, over the weekend, and everybody's been just kind of pulling for him. And uh, and and to hear the news this morning, you know, it's it's just uh, one of those things. It's tragic. It's um, I I right away even when I heard the news on Saturday, I, I've spent numerous uh times and hours with him talking football and a lot of times it's hard to talk football because he has such a, a fun personality and uh probably known as much for his his quick uh one-liners as he is uh his x's and o's but brought so much to the game I and mean, people forget you know he went to byu uh as an undergrad and, and didn't play football he actually played rugby but but learned the game lavelle edwards would let him come over and watch film with, with guys like Steve Young and, and Jim McMahon. And that's, that's what got him intrigued into kind of the air raid offense. If you go back to those, those years in the late seventies, early eighties, BYU is one of the only teams to really spread people out and throw the football. And I think it intrigued him. And, um, and that's where he and how mommy started to kind of create that, that air raid offense. And now you watch football on Saturday and even Sunday and you see, you know, the spread formations and air raid uh, concepts, you know, from time to time. So uh, just just a uh, incredible uh, character, um, a lot of fun. I, I think of his teams at Texas Tech and, you know, I think about he was at Texas Tech in the Big 12 and he averaged over eight wins a year in Lubbock, which is tough right. to do. Uh, had had a great run at, at Washington State, and then uh, when decided to go into the into the SEC with Mississippi State, and had a good team this year. So, just a a, a great personality for for the game of college football, but a very innovative um, teacher of the game, and um, a, a guy that uh, will be missed on on many levels. And Paul was telling us just a few moments ago, which I did not know, was that he had a law degree as well, and that Paul was saying that sometimes yeah. it was difficult to get him to talk about football because he had so many other interests and so many other things, Herbie, that he liked talking about and, and was fascinated by, which is sometimes in a world where there is so, people are so myopic within the football world that that may have may also made him a little bit unusual. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, he, he, he liked to kind of play coy and... and say things that made you think, what in the heck is this guy doing? What, what's he saying? Meanwhile, he's the smartest guy in the room. You know, he, he was that, he was that guy. I was just on the field with him this year, this year. Uh, they played Alabama just it seems like about maybe a month ago or so. And, um, you know, he was, there's Nick Saban to my left. There's Mike, Mike Leach to my right. Teams are warming up around us. And the last thing we're talking about is football. Cause you got mm -hmm. one guy with his arms crossed at, you know, and Nick Saban, and he's just—he's always wants to—he just wants to get the game started, and he's—he's he's got that nervous energy about him. And there's Mike Leach telling some kind of you know silly story, and it could not be any more opposite personalities uh, standing on the field. And I'm just you know sitting there, kind of listening to him uh, talk. But I think every coach—the reason you saw the outpouring of of uh, thoughts and, and concerns and prayers on social media is because even people that competed against him had a, a special place in their heart for him because of that personality that, that you uh, are alluding to. 
um, because it was hard to talk ball with him because he, he always had some kind of reference of anything. You could be talking to him about anything and it could go down a path about, um, you know, he could talk about space. He could talk about history. He could talk about anything. Um, you're like, coach, I'm just trying to ask you about third down. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to learn a little bit more about the game, but he just had, um, he just, I think everybody, you know, you're going to mourn his loss. And at some point, you know, we've all dealt with, uh, with, with close friends or family members when they pass. And at some point, you start to, to, to also celebrate uh, the life. And I think a lot of people, uh, you know, they'll be mourning and then they'll be celebrating and, and thinking about the different stories that we all sh- have shared over the time that we've been able to spend with Mike. 